Jesus Christ said that no one knows the day and hour of his return to earth. But he emphatically told his followers to watch for the signs of his return. While we may not know the exact day Christ will return, we are told to watch for the signs or the events that indicate his return is imminent. Are you discerning the signs of the times? Hello everyone and welcome back to the program. We're living in a world today. If you look out at this world as it is today, it is a world full of trouble. There's so much chaos and disorder, confusion from one nation to the next, from one community to the next. And yet the students of Bible prophecy, we know, we know that there is hope just beyond the horizon because all of these events, this chaotic world that we see today, all these prophesied events, they do culminate in the greatest event in the history of the universe, the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. But it's just before that, as Jesus himself said in Mark 13, in Luke 21, in Matthew 24, he said that we'd be coming into a time of great trouble, that it would get so bad that unless he cut it short, God that is, unless God intervenes to cut these days short, well, man would just end up destroying himself. That's right out of the Gospels. That's from the New Testament. It's in your Bible. That's how dangerous this world is becoming. If you know anything, again, if you know anything about Bible prophecy, you know that the wars and the, the famines, the disease epidemics, pestilence, what we might call natural disasters. We know that all of these things are prophesied to happen in the last days. That's the days we're living in right now. We'll begin our study today in Matthew 24. Let's look at one of the gospel accounts of this prophecy, this Olivet prophecy given by Jesus himself. He said in Matthew 24 and verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So here is Christ talking about the days of Noah and what led up to the flood. That's right. Jesus Christ here is corroborating the history of Noah's day and the earthwide flood, the universal destruction brought on by man's sins. And Jesus said it's going to be just like that in the last days where we're so caught up in our sins that we're just caught completely off guard. The day of Christ, it's coming upon us and we're totally unaware of it. Most people, that is. Verse 38 says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the, the coming of the Son of Man be. See, we're so caught up into our fleshly desires, the pulls of the flesh. It says marriage, eating, drinking, just carrying on with our daily lives, and so much of it improper and unlawful conduct. And yet we're just so steeped in those sins that we get right to the, the return of Jesus Christ. And it says there we're caught unawares. People today are just not concerned, not nearly enough, about the mortal danger that we're facing. They're not concerned enough to change their behavior, to change the way that they're living. We want to go right on living the way that we've always been living, even when we see the world around us becoming perilous. Surely you can see this if you're watching the news, if you're looking at some of the headlines, let's switch over to Luke's account. This is Luke chapter 21, and we'll start in verse uh, 34. It says, and take heed to yourselves. So here is, even in, in the midst of all this chaos and this confusion and this disorder, 
Here is Christ's warning to us. This is what he says to you. If you want to see and understand what's happening in this world, if you're going to know that we're living in the last days as prophesied by Jesus Christ, then here is Christ's warning for you and for me. It says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged, that means to be oppressed or weighed down with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So here is Jesus talking to his disciples, saying that if you want to be prepared and ready for what's coming, here's what you need to do. For the rest, look, this is coming like a snare upon all, all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. In other words, the whole earth is going to be caught unawares, totally unprepared for the fulfillment of all these prophecies. It's going to happen at an unexpected hour, but it shouldn't be that way for the true disciples of Christ. If they're living in accordance with God's revealed truth, God's holy laws, if they're obeying God's laws, if they're not get, getting caught up into the affairs of this life, but if they're looking into the Word of God, if they're heeding God's commandments, if they're following Christ's instructions, then they won't be caught off guard. Notice verse 36. Here are the specific instructions. Jesus said, Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, all these things that are prophesied. It says, Watch and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape. It says, And to stand before the Son of Man. So here's how you avoid being caught unaware. It says, Watch. Watch world events, obviously, and pray. Pray always. But really, there's a third instruction that's built into this. It's implied because we don't know really what to watch in terms of world events unless we're grounded in the prophecies of God. And so we're studying our Bibles. Watch world events as they relate to Bible prophecy and study the Bible. Study Bible prophecy. A third of the Bible is prophecy, and yet this is the, the third that so many people, even in the traditional Christian world, they just want to dismiss it. They just want to say it's all ancient history. None of it applies to today, and yet scripture after scripture, passage after passage, we cover so many of them on this program, it talks about what's to happen in the latter days. It says this in Luke 21, Matthew 24, the Olivet Prophecy. The disciples were coming to Christ saying, what's to happen in the last days? And then he went on to tell them. These are the events that are happening in our time. Watch world events as they relate to Bible prophecy. Study the Word of God. Study God's truth. Study prophecy. And then pray fervently. We offered the How to Pray booklet recently on this program. Today I just want to draw attention to our 36th lesson Bible Correspondence Course. This will help you to study your Bible. It's amazing how much you can, you can finish in this course. Of course, we recommend that you, you write out the questions and also the answers, which are supplied by the Holy Bible, writing out chapter and verse. And it's amazing how much you can accomplish if you just chip away at this 30 or 45 minutes, maybe an hour every day. If you're really diligent in your studies, this is all part of the uh, admonition in Luke 21 and verse 36. Watch world events, study the Bible, and pray always. Always be in that attitude or that spirit of prayer. Draw closer to God as you see the events around you, as you see a world in turmoil, as you see a world in, in chaos and with so many troubles. Draw closer to God now more than ever. Here we've had so many crises in this calendar year, and yet... How many people have really drawn closer to God because of it? You see stories, even in the midst of this uh, pandemic, so many stories of people just wasting away their downtime, and they have a lot of it, but wasting it away 
with the internet or TV or movies or whatever it might be. And here are these prophecies that say most people in this world are, are going to be caught completely unprepared, unaware of these fulfilled prophecies. The Apostle Paul said, look, now is the time, if ever there's a time, to wake up out of sleep, to awaken from a deep slumber. Now is the time to do it. He said it's high time that we wake up and look at what's happening in this world and let God explain why the world is the way it is. I mentioned the Bible Correspondence Course, but these two booklets as well. Powerful little booklet on Bible prophecy. Nuclear Armageddon is at the door. That's what Jesus said in the Gospels, that you can know. You may not know the specific hour, but you can know when the prophecies are right at the door. And this one here, we've had this around for many, many years. He was right. This is a booklet that really does pull together all of the signature prophecies of Herbert Armstrong. And of course, I say prophecies of Herbert Armstrong. They're actually prophecies of God. This is just uh, Herbert Armstrong letting the Bible interpret itself. And we've pulled all of the significant prophecies together in one volume. And if you haven't uh, requested a, a, a copy of this booklet yet, uh, please call our operators today and request that, the Armageddon booklet, and then uh, enroll in the correspondence lesson. If you're really serious about studying your Bible, we'll be right back. In Matthew chapter 16, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees approached Jesus Christ. Here, here was Jesus Christ. He was in the midst of his ministry. Here's the Son of God, God in the flesh. And these Pharisees came to him. He's performing all of these miracles. I think this was right after he fed thousands of people miraculously. And yet they were still kind of badgering him about signs. They wanted to know the sign of his, uh, his coming. Let's look at this, Matthew 16 and verse 1, it says, And the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Show us a sign. Show us, uh, just show us one more that we can believe. And then we'll see if we're, if we're really serious about following you. Their attitude wasn't right, of course. And Jesus, you can look at Mark chapter 8 and see uh, again, the parallel account over there, and see where it says that Jesus sighed deeply. In other words, he groaned in his spirit. He thought, well, here we go again. What more do you need? Look at what I've given you already. They didn't accept it. So here's how he responded in Matthew 16, verse 2. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning... It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? Here they could forecast the weather. They had all their models that they could uh, estimate, say that this was going to happen in the future. And yet they couldn't discern the signs of the times. They didn't know what was coming. They didn't know what, what God had prophesied because they really weren't uh, close to God. They, they're like the others in these passages we've read. Caught off guard, unaware of what God is doing. This is why we need prophecy, a steady diet of it. Now, there's certainly a lot to be said for Bible history and Christian living and, of course, God's commandments. We study all of it, but Bible prophecy... That's a, a significant portion of our spiritual diet because, like Jesus said, we have to watch world events as they relate to Bible prophecy. Here we've been around, the Trumpet Magazine, it's been around for 30 years, and it gives you a biblical forecast. I was mentioning on my radio program the other day the, the recent story about Hong Kong and how that China is using this worldwide pandemic while the world is distracted with a health crisis, here is China tightening its stranglehold on Hong Kong. And that's something we were writing about back in 1997. We were telling you what was going to happen as a result of Britain letting go of that precious Seagate, Hong Kong. 
And of course, China at the time promised that Hong Kong, Hong Kong would maintain its autonomy. But here, if you've noticed over the last year, all the protesting in Hong Kong, and then here recently, with China just imposing its will on Hong Kong, the lawmakers in, in Hong Kong have no say now. This is after just 20 some years. That was in the trumpet forecast back in the mid to late 1990s. And that's just one example of many. Staying here in Matthew 16, notice what he says, Christ does to these, these Pharisees. It says, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. So here Christ is talking to religious people, Pharisees and Sadducees. And he says that he calls them an adulterous generation. In other words, you used to be married to God. You used to be close to God. But because you've, you've betrayed him, because you've gotten caught up into spiritual adultery, well, now you no longer recognize the signs of the times. That's what happens when we drift far from God. There was a story here recently in the Telegraph. Uh, this prominent historian here in the UK who said that the, the Dunkirk evacuation from 1940, there was no miraculous hand involved in that. There was no miracle from God. This is a prominent historian who, as it happens, is uh, uh, in the royal family. He's the queen's son-in-law. But he says, Dunkirk, no miracle. Instead, he, he points to Admiral Ramsey and says, he did all the heroic work. He did the superhuman efforts. But, but certainly God, God's hand wasn't involved. Now you go back to 1940 and you look at any coverage, for the most part, the Telegraph or whatever else, in newspapers, in, uh, among politicians. And they were, there was a general acknowledgement of God's miraculous hand after the Dunkirk evacuation. You, have, you had prominent leaders here in the UK that told the people of Britain, we want to thank God for this. But we come up to the 80th anniversary, you know, back to the 60th anniversary even, back to the year 2000. Still, most people, most people acknowledged that God miraculously intervened. But now you keep moving forward. We're progressing, right? Well, really, we're drifting even farther and farther from God. But we get to 2020, and then here's the Telegraph, a paper that 80 years ago said, well, sure, God miraculously intervened. And now you've got this featured opinion piece by a prominent historian who presides over a lot of historical sites here in the UK. And he says, no miracle. What has happened to us? My father gave a Key of David program just recently about the modern historian who wants to erase God out of the history. We don't want God involved in the present. We don't want to study Bible prophecy. Certainly God is not doing anything with respect to end time events. And we want to erase him out of history. We just want God out of the picture entirely. Is that, is that a positive development for our world today? Is that another sign that we're living in the last days? Well, if your eyes are open to the truth, it certainly is. Let's go back to Luke 21, the Gospel of Luke 21 and verse 29. It says here, and he spoke to them a parable. This is a few verses earlier than the passage we read earlier. It says, and he spoke to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand. So likewise you... When you see these things come to pass, know you that the kingdom of God is near at hand. So consider the instructions from Christ. He's saying that if you're a disciple, if you're watching, if you're studying, if you're praying, then it's not that difficult to see and to discern the signs of the times. If you're obeying God, if you're drawing close to God, if you're studying God's Word, it's not that difficult to discern the signs of the times. But for those who aren't following Christ's instructions, 
Well, they're spiritually speaking, they're just in the dark. They have no idea. They're caught completely off guard. Suddenly, unexpectedly, and all of these fulfilled prophecies are upon us. Let's go over to the Apostle Paul's letter in 1 Thessalonians. This, this is 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 1. It says, but he's writing to the, the people of God here, God's family, the disciples of Christ. He says, but of the times and, and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. You're God's people. You're, you're informed. You understand the really big news of today. You understand what's uh, significant and important with respect to Bible prophecy. Now, there's verses that point out that we don't know the, the, the day or the hour, but we certainly can know when it's near. We certainly can know when it's at the door. We just read those verses about the fig tree. It is possible to discern that these are the last days. If you're a student of Bible prophecy, verse 2 it says, For uh, yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. That's the way it is for uh, almost all of those who are in this world. Like we read earlier, but not so for God's disciples. It says, for when they say, uh, that's speaking of the diplomats of peace, or the ambassadors of peace, as the prophet Isaiah said, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. See, for this world, it does happen suddenly, God's intervention in the affairs of men. Suddenly, unexpectedly, but then verse 4 says, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You're not in, in darkness, you're children of the light, as Paul goes on to say. Verse 5, it says, You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night uh, nor of darkness. You see, our minds have been opened to the truth. So if you answer God's call, if you respond to the warning, if you dig in and, and prove the truth of God, like the Bereans did, proving everything that Paul said by the Scriptures, then you too can be a child of the light. Verse 6 here says, Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Some similar instructions to what Jesus Christ gave to us in Luke 21. Now, the warning for us, if our minds have been, op been open to the truth, is that we have to stay vigilant, we have to remain sober, or otherwise we can go to sleep spiritually. That's what's happened to so many of God's people, even in these last days. And that too, of course, is prophesied. That too is a, a sign that we're living in the last days. One final passage here. This is in uh, 1 Peter 4, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. And verse 1, to begin with, it says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And then down in verse 7 it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober. Watch unto prayer. So these same admonitions, these same instructions, the end of all things is at hand. Be sober, it says. Watch, just like Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, watch unto prayer. And then you can add to that, study your Bible so that you know what to watch for. That's what our correspondence course is, is for. It's to help you get to know your Bible. It's to help guide you in your Bible study. I went through this quote just a couple of uh, programs ago. This is from Mr. Armstrong's work, Herbert W. Armstrong's book, Mystery of the Ages. And he talks here about these many prophecies and how they culminate in the return of Christ. Yet he says here, how amazing, what a tragedy, that in church services and gospel preaching today, one seldom, if ever, hears of Christ as a coming king and world ruler. See, that's the inspiration and the hope there is in these prophesied events of the last days. It culminates in this. It says, spiritual principalities and powers of evil are ruling the world today. Look at the world we're living in. It says, it is these earthly governments of Satan that will be destroyed and replaced 
by Christ at his second coming, Christ's kingdom is of the world tomorrow. Yes, the kingdoms, the governments of this world, they're about to be replaced. In fact, that correspondence course, lesson three, talks all about that. You, you get right into prophecy in the Armstrong College Bible correspondence course, and then it takes you right through the Bible, a 36-lesson study of the inspiration of God, the God-inspired teachings found in the Holy Bible. Request that, enroll in that if you haven't already, and then request also the two free booklets that we offer here today. Thank you for joining us on today's show, and we'll see you next time.